Hello, my name is George Hayes, and today's tutorial will be about setting up SDL 2.0 with the Mingji WW64 compiler and a code blocks IDE. All right, to get started, we're going to start off by setting up the code blocks IDE, and to do that, you're going to go to codeblocks.org and click on downloads and click on download binary release and then select the code block 16.01 MingGW set that up exe and this will actually give you a base compiler with the 32-bit compiler already in it and you're going to go through the standard setup and have it set up to the default directories and everything if you make changes to it and you have trouble not doing but because you didn't do what I said then you're going to create your own problems because it's going to make it more difficult for you to fix it alright so go through and do everything the way I say please and hopefully you end up with the right thing after that you're going to download Mingji WW64 and you're going to download it from sourceforge.net projects Mingji WW64 there are other locations downloaded from and they're not all the same and they don't all work as well alright so download it from here again alright and when you get done doing it I am going to sit there and show you how to set that up, what options to select to make sure this actually works. All right. Icons haven't loaded up on here right, right here. All right. So, can I go through here? And you're going to select 6.2.0. Change this to x86.64. POSIX SEH is fine. Then the directory I would like you to set it to will be C Mingji WW64. If you have to create that directory yourself using make new folder, do so. All right, I'm not going to run through it. I've already got it installed and I'm not going to change what I've got. All right. So now that you've done that, you should have a Mingji WW64 directory like this alright and if you're interested in going as far as doing further stuff uh, after this besides the STL and possibly using glue and uh, OpenGL later on I would suggest go ahead and taking this directory here and adding it into your system pass file on your operating system alright and you can find tutorials as far as do uh, compiling glue for both 32 and 64 bit as far as on my channel here and get the additional information all you need as far as for doing that and you'll also be able to find tutorials as far as setting up uh, OpenGL with this here and I'll be doing another video on the 64 bit version here very soon alright so <laughs> All right, now that you've got that, let's go ahead and download SDL, and we're going to download that, sorry, from libsdl.org, go into SDL 2.0 down here, when you click on it, it should bring this up, you want to grab this one down here, it says SDL2 development-2.05 mean gwtar.gz, and Again, basically very similar to the previous thing. I created an SDL directory in C, and I've downloaded all my stuff into it. You're going to use something like 7-zip, say unzip here, do it twice, because you have to do first uh, tar.gz, which is going to leave you with a tar, then unzip that again, and you will get your two, SDL 2.2.05 directory. All right. And it's going to look like this on the inside. So you know this top directory here is 32-bit. Bottom directory here is 64-bit. And once you have that, if you won't need any of the project files, which are basically like if you want to be able to upload PNG images, uh, do sound, networking, uh, true type font, so on like that, those will be in lib sdl.org forward slash projects forward slash and you can find all those here and when you download them like I've done you will also 
put them in the same directory and they have a similar structure such as this is the 2.01 images which works with 2.05 SDL all right so no need to freak out that the last number doesn't match all right and the directories are set up the same way 32 bit 64 bit all right and yes they say 32 on the end of these but that's because the compiler compiling it is 32 bit and it creates a 64 bit program all right now that you have that done you also need to know that let's see I should go back here a second and show you something all right when you are going to sit there and create a project you will need to go into whichever one of these you're using such as in this case I'm using 64-bit and you want to use the libraries from that all right the actual DLLs I see that which are going to be in the binary you'll put those into your project folder and right, I'll give you an example here in a few seconds after I'm done and you're gonna other than that I'll show you as far as inside the project all right so here I've created a project and I'm going to show you how the settings are set up as far as in code blocks now you're going to go under settings compiler then you're going to have a set up your tool chain first for Ming GW all right and you're going to set that, that is going to be attached to this base directory right here you're going to copy that into right there all right which is your Ming GW 64 directory move these apart so you can be seen at the same time sorry okay and then these are all going to come out of your binary directory here and you'll find them down in this location for your C compiler is GCC the x86 version which would be right here and then your G++ is going to be right there all right and of course you know minus GCC again as far as for up here and then as far as wind resolution is right there uh, resource compiler windows resource compiler sorry your make is right here all right and so you're just gonna put those paths as far as that there is no additional paths needed but you are gonna have linker settings and stuff like that now you won't need the uh, open GL section down here that I have in here because right now this is just on SDL and if you go to the OpenGL tutorial I have on this then you'll be using those as well and yes we'll be using glue 2.0 64-bit with OpenGLs alright anyway so first thing I have in here is minus L Ming GW 32 minus L SDL 2 main minus L SDL 2 minus L SDL 2 underscore image right for my image files if you're not going to use it then you don't need to have it in but if you are going to use it put it in all right uh, so any of these that you actually download you want to put in I have my TTF which is true type font mixer for sound net net for networking all right then under search directories we're gonna to have to set up both the compiler and linkers all right and I'll show you how you get those we'll go back over here so this binary and jump back to SDL all right so I have my SDL directory that we created with what we downloaded and here's for the SDL 2.05 and I'm going to grab for the first one since they include so we're going to go like that this got control C and then you're going to add paste it in and so forth and I've already got mine in here and you're going to do the same thing for your true type font net mixer and images and remember those directories are set up the same way and so we can take a quick look and go back on that expand it out a little if I can here Gee. all right so if I click back on SDL here as far as in this directory and we come up to images for example right here go into this and we'll grab the include out of there as far as on it now the linker is actually going to lib 
which would be to your library file right there and so you would click it instead and copy it in as far as for all the linker directories all right and it needs those in there otherwise it won't be able to compile your programs very simple there is nothing under resource compiler so you have compiler and linker settings as I showed you where to set those up uh, and your tool chain okay and the main GW W64 portion the reason you had that sorry which I probably actually skipped in this you're gonna take this GNU GCC compiler here all right click on it you click copy all right and then when it's made a copy you'll rename that copy all right and then you'll go through and put in the resource compile folder executables and stuff and the linker settings and search directories with that one selected okay if I go right now and I go back up GCC like this all right yes I have it in here as far as these as well because I also do 32-bit programming but this way you can go to here and you'll have it in for your 64-bit all right now that we've got that done that's how you do the setup as far as on that now to actually have an actual functioning project I have a sample one right here and it's very simple it just produces a clear screen and there it is called SDL render clear okay very simple I have an includes file where I just have my SDL SDL images and I just stream then I create a great game class that has a boolean for running all right to indicate that the class is actually running all right a window a renderer and then an event handler all right then I call game as far as in the class then I have my execute my other functions which is on execute on initialize load content on event right which is grab my event handler on loop on render and then clean up all right so if we take a look we have in main sitting down here and the first thing it does when game is created it creates the game right the game then runs on execute which is right here and on execute runs on initialize and if it returns a false it returns a minus one basically saying it's not running all right because windows is initially set to null when the, this is created here and run it and the game is set running is set to true all right so while running all right SDL poll event handle first thing then goes to on event all right and then on loop and on render and if, if this finishes up that means it's no longer running so we do our cleanup and we exit out so on to initialize if we're gonna check to do our initialization here SDL initialize SDL everything and everything otherwise you could do like all your audio and everything separately there's popping up uh, showing us all the different things you can do individually joysticks and stuff like that haptic controls and so on all right now going past that then we're going to create our window the rest of it's just as far as um, error correct you know grabbing all right now we're going to create a window using SDL create window put the name of the window start position and your width and height and then that it's the window shown and if it's null then and it returns a false code it means it didn't create a window so then we're going to create a render to actually display space inside that window and here's a render uh, it's called use created with SDL create render we pass into window minus one as it says up here if for it to initialize the first supporting one render that supports the requested flags all right it's hardware accelerated and it's got vertical sync and set to this render okay and then we got some error catching all right if render is null then we know that this didn't create a render and so then we kick out an error and return false otherwise we return true load content right now we aren't loading anything so we're just returning a one on event uh, the only thing we're checking is to make sure that somebody hasn't hit SDL quit and we're returning false if it does which basically sets running to false which ends the program 
on the loop. We have nothing in there because we're not doing any handling of anything right now. So this would be where we handle the normal uh, things that we need to do every time we pass through a loop, such as if we're moving characters, updating AI, anything that needs to be updated, we'd sit there and handle as far as in there. Other than what's handled as far as event handling, such as somebody pushes down a key or something like that, then we'd set that as far as in here and then maybe handle it over and on loop. All right. On render. Right now, we're not actually rendering anything. Anything we do render would be done as far as in this section here. And then clean up. Well, we're going to destroy the render, then destroy the window in that order, and then SDL quit. And like I said, this is just a very basic, basic setup as far as on it. As far as going beyond this, there's more tutorials I provide. And you can sit there and use those there, even though it's in for 32 bit. You can take them, drop them right into it, and it should compile and work for you. All right. And basically, all you're doing is adding in the additional stuff to the same program file. All right. Anyway, I uh, hope you find this tutorial helpful, useful, and please subscribe, like if you feel it deserves it. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.